welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. And this week we are looking at four naked sports bikes. Or street bikes if you prefer. So we are back at AR Motorcycles in Lowestoft. And this is what we have for you this week. The Sinis RSX. The Zontis Firefly. The Zontis Scorpion. And the Sim SB Wolf. So as usual, all these bikes are 125 Learn Illegal. So first up we have the Sinis RSX. Now this comes with a 10.8 brake horsepower, fuel injection, air-cooled engine. Single overhead cam with a five-speed gearbox, good for around 65, possibly 70 mile an hour on a good day. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love But the thing is, if you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks, this and that, spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness, hilarious. You think you're worth my time, you're delirious, mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior, inferior. You know I'll always be a bit superior. Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag. I want you to hear words, you can say them back. I want you to feel free from the chains at last, and to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah. This Euro 4 compatible model comes with upside down forks at this end and a mono shot at this end. 280mm disc at the front, 230mm disc on the rear with a 110 tyre at this end and a 130 tyre spooling up the back end. It's quite a big bike when you get on it, it certainly doesn't feel like a 125. 840 millimeters wide with these long handlebars, 780 millimeter seat height, so you don't feel like you're on a squatty little old star 125. Okay, it does weigh 140 kilos, so you are going to be doing 65, possibly 70, maybe even 85 if you knock it into neutral and go down a very steep one in one hill. But at the end of the day, it feels nice, and that's what's important. It's got quite a big tank, 13 and a half litres, so the range between fill-ups should be quite good. Comes in two different colours, you've either got this midnight purple, looks a bit black from where you are, with these green accents, or pearl white with red accents. Now with the red and white bike, this exposed Ducati style frame is red, really stands out quite nicely. But overall, it's got a fantastic look to this bike. I like how it's got the USB port, like its big brother, the Sinus Terrain. So you can plug in your GPS or your phone. And the dash has two different colours, either red or blue, whichever suits your mood. Overall, stunning to look at, I think. I love this exhaust design with a twin exit. The tank is very nicely flowing with the frame here. Mudguard looks very nice. And overall, I can't fault it. I do like this belly pan as well. It's very subtle and stops what it needs to stop. I've, I've got nothing to fault this bike whatsoever. I really can't fault it. Stunning, stunning looking bike. Even this monster style head unit. Very nice indeed. It's even got daytime running lights either side. Fantastic little touch. So, Let's move on to our next bike, the Zontis Firefly.
7 brake horsepower fuel injected air cooled engine also Euro 4 similar to that of the Sinus. It has a 5 speed gearbox and a kickstart just in case. So we've got a roadway up fork up front, twin shocks at the rear, we've got a 240mm disc up front, a 220mm disc at the rear. So we've got a 90 tyre up front which isn't massive but a 130 tyre on the rear so it looks bigger but ultimately it's all about balance. So again we've got a nice sleek headlight up the front here, we've got a large analogue rev counter but all the rest is digital. So this has a 780mm seat height which I have to say is pretty comfortable, it's quite nice. So this bike is 10 kilos lighter than the Sinus at 130 kilograms. The overall length is 1928mm so it's quite long and it's 766mm wide but it still feels like a big bike. But you have to remember it's a 125 so you're only going to get your 66 to 70 miles an hour ish. So like the Sinus, this comes in a stunning pearl white and red or alternatively you can have a metallic ocean blue. So we come to styling, it's quite a sleek looking bike, it's very modern looking. You've got a nice little belly pan down here, little vents tucked in here, there's some imitation vents here but they look nice. Got a twin exit exhaust here and a single cam which I really like. Overall this bike looks and feels really well put together and it does come with a two year warranty which is excellent. So let's move on to the Zontis Scorpion. So you may be looking at this Zontis Scorpion and thinking, well, it's just like the Firefly, surely? Well, you'd be right. It is. Same 10.7 brake horsepower engine. Same gearbox. Same exhaust. Same forks. Same shocks. Same dash. Oh, it is 49 millimetres longer. That's probably this number plate holder. And and the seat is 15 millimeters higher so there oh yes the colors are different you've got black and green or black and red the dash is the same the wheels are the same same bike oh no it looks different plastics bend a bit differently and you've got indicators here so basically this bike comes down to style do you prefer this style or the Firefly style? Personally, I actually prefer this style. I prefer this front end. I prefer this mudguard. I prefer the colour options on this bike. I actually prefer this bike overall. So out of the two, I'd be tempted with this. Other than that, Feel 15 millimeters higher. Let me pop it out. Get off. Oh no, we need to compare. No, no, I can't. It is lower. This is higher. Yes. But 
I like that one more. No, no, this one's better. That one? No, Firefly's nicer. Whatever. Tell you what, though, although I prefer the Firefly, I do love the indicators in the tank housing. That's just brilliant. And I prefer the clear glass as thinner. I don't know, this. I like the back end of this one more. Oh, I like the clear. Clear's nice because it matches the clear of the indicators. Maybe. Well, maybe this one, if they had a clear one on there, it'd be even nicer. There's not a lot of difference, but they're both nice. What do you think? Firefly. Now, at the end of this video, we are going to be running the Zontis Firefly, which is pretty much the same setup as this, same exhaust, same engine, so it's going to sound the same, and the Sinus RSX. So, after we've done the Sim Wolf, which is coming up next, you can hear what they sound like. So, that brings us to the Sim SB Wolf. is the Euro 3 model. There is a Euro 4 model on the way. This one, being the Euro 3, has the 10.6 brake horsepower uh, Honda Pedigree engine with a carburetor, also a rear drum. The Euro 4 model will have, I believe, the same engine with fuel injection and combined brakes with a rear disc. Although a slightly different design, both models, Euro 3 and 4, have a 260mm front disc. The Euro 4 model will have a 220mm rear disc. So as you'd expect with pretty much all bikes these days, it's got a five-speed gearbox. This particular model has a 16-litre fuel tank, so that's pretty large, and you can have a good range between Phillips on that. The Euro 4 model, however, will have a 14-litre fuel tank, which is still quite big, but not as big, obviously. With the various changes from Euro 3 to Euro 4, you're also losing 15 kilograms off of the weight of this bike, down to 140 kilos on the Euro 4 model, this one being 155 kilograms. So other than that, both models are pretty much the same. They both have this 790mm seat, which is super comfortable. Width-wise, it's not as wide, 750mm. We have a similar style dash up here. You've got the analog rev counter with a small digital display for your speed and whatnot. And it has a really mean looking front end and the indicators sort of match up with it really nicely. So it has the right way up front forks, monoshock rear end and it really does feel like a big bike and it looks like a big bike especially because it doesn't say 125 anywhere on it. I really like the overall style of this bike. It's a really nice sleek understated looking sports street bike. It's really nice. Overall I love it. The only thing I don't particularly like is the chrome cap on this cam. However as a package it looks great. One item I particularly don't like is the side stand. It's a self-retracting type, so every time you lift it off the stand, it pings up. I prefer to be able to put that down and then get off the bike, not have to get off and then put the side stand down. It's just awkward for me. However, this, like all the other bikes we've looked at, has a centre stand, so that does make it brilliant and stable. So, first of all, let's have a listen to this, the Sinus RSX. I like where this key is positioned, actually. It's just above the tank, so it doesn't interfere with any of the instrument cluster. So a nice digital display here counting up through the numbers. Very nice, I like that. Nice deep rumble. That's 
feels very comfortable to ride. The gear change is very confident. It's straight into gear. It's not, oh, am I in, am I not in? It feels very nice. It's very well balanced. When you go round a corner or when you turn round, very slow speeds, there's no chance of you falling over. It really does feel very well balanced indeed. And I think part of that is to do with the width of these handlebars. Very impressed, completely and utterly impressed with this bike. That sounds pretty special. Let's see what this one sounds like. This one feels very different to ride. It's certainly a lot lower and you feel as though you're sitting right on the tank. It's comfortable and the gear change is again quite confident. But I actually prefer the ride of the Sinus. That feels a more balanced bike on the road. Don't get me wrong, this is still a nice bike to ride, but it just feels lower and I think I prefer to be higher up. Other than that, it feels very well built and very well put together. And when you ride it, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. But it does stand like a 125. So let's talk about some prices. Well, as you may expect, this Sinus RSX comes out as the most expensive at 2000 249 pounds on the road with a one-year parts and labor warranty. Now, I think that price is very well justified. Having ridden the bike and listened to it, I'm very impressed and it looks absolutely stunning. So onto the Zonti's Firefly. It's a good looking bike, there's no doubt about it. On the road, 1,699 pounds and as we said before, a two-year parts and labor warranty. What's the ramble about? This is just great. The Zontis Scorpion, £1,699, exactly the same price as the Firefly. It also comes with a two year parts and labour warranty. Now, personally, I would go for the Scorpion over the Firefly simply because it has a higher seat height, so it feels better when you're sitting on it. Other than that, nothing to choose between them. And finally, the Sim, SB Wolf. It's for the Euro 3 model, £1,899. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. The Euro 4 model hasn't yet been announced as a release date or an actual price. There is a rumour that it may be just shy of 3000 at about £2,800 or £2,900. But it does come with a five year warranty. Five year warranty. And we may see that towards the end of the year. I personally like this one. I like the Sinus RSX. However, I'm struggling with this because I like the way it looks, I like the way it feels, especially bigger than the Firefly, and that price, £1,699. I don't think you can go far wrong with that at all. That is super cheap for an on the road bike with two year parts and maybe one to this basically. Now, Chinese bikes do have a bad reputation and I think it's very much unjustified these days. They are very well built bikes. They tend to be based on something else. My FB Mondial is a Chinese made bike, but it's based on the Aprilia RS4. It uses a Piaggio engine. It is superbly built. Chinese bikes are not like they used to be. They are very, very, very much better than they were. 
I think the reputation comes from back when there was no official distributor for Chinese bikes. So people were ordering them in from China in a crate, putting the things together themselves. They weren't checking them over. They didn't fully understand what was going on. They weren't doing the servicing correctly. So there's going to be failures. Very much so. These yes. are looked after properly. They are. They're great bikes. And at the end of the day, if anything goes wrong, you just bring it back to the dealer and parts are available very, very readily. So there you have it. Four, one, two, five, street bikes, naked, racers, whatever you want to call them. So if you've got a budget of around £2,000, look at your choice. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you very much for joining us. Please come back next time when we'll be reviewing Bobbers and Choppers. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And coming up soon is our new giveaway. We are knocking on the door of 1,000 subscribers, so that's coming very soon. Watch out for that. Until then, drive and ride carefully, but have fun. See you later. See you later.